Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming this afternoon. Um, as I begin, I would like to first thank the consortium participants, uh, many of whom are on stage with us. There's a few folks that aren't with us today uh, that weren't able to attend the conference. But uh, if you guys would please stand, if you're a member of the consortium, would you please stand? Without their support financially, um, as well as their moral support as I work through this, uh, this would not have been possible today. Um, also, the remaining boards you see on stage are all either alumni from WVU or current students at West Virginia University who were students of Virginia Thompson. And if you guys are please stand now. They were a wealth of information and ideas um, over the past, gosh, year and a half, I think, since uh, we lost you know, one of the wonderful college professors and hornist and artist um, that we had among us. Um, also, we're honored to have Mr. John Hendricks, who's the former director of bands at West Virginia University, soon to be the associate dean of the College of Creative Arts, um, who graciously agreed to conduct the ensemble. He was a colleague of Virginia for 21 years, and we are thankful to have him with us today. And finally, um, I would like to personally recognize Dr. Keith Jackson. He's the director of the School of Music at West Virginia University, um, who also worked with Virginia for over 20 years. Um, it's unusual these days that you have a department that have so many faculty that work together for so long and have such a great career and uh, working relationship. And without his support and guidance, um, I don't know if I would have pulled this off. <laughs> so please, thank you. <laughs> Virginia Thompson was born in Davenport, Iowa and attended the University of Iowa where she did a bachelor's in music degree and also a doctoral of musical arts. And she also did a master's in music at the University of Arizona. She was a student of Paul Anderson, who was a longtime professor of Warren at Iowa. Virginia was one of his many students who became university professors. These Iowa students included who's who of university professors and artists, including Randall Faust and Bill Scharnberg, who are both performing with us today, um, who are members of this consortium and have been instrumental in making this happen, as well as several past presidents of the IHS and other university professors. Um, Paul Anderson instilled a sense of artistry and service in his students, and certainly Virginia Thompson exemplified these qualities throughout her career. Her service to the IHS included two terms on the Advisory Council from 1995 to 2002, and a term as president in 2000 to 2002. And she was recognized with the Service Medal of Honor in 2015. She regularly attended international and, and regional workshops as a performing artist, as well as having her students perform for the work party events and competitions. She also served as a host for the Southeast Regional Horn Workshop. And one of the stories that was shared last night during our rehearsal was by another one of my teachers, Dr. Jean Martin Williams, who said that Virginia was instrumental in mentoring her when she first joined the university, the faculty of the University of Georgia, and started participating in regional workshops. She's remembered not only as a beloved teacher, but also for her sense of humor and her kindness and caring. Known to legions of her students as simply Dr. T. She was an inspirational and beloved teacher who found the time and energy to assist all of her students. Her pedagogical expertise was matched by her integrity and compassion. She was not only a teacher, but a beloved friend and mentor. She shared many of her students' life experiences, including their weddings, births, loss of loved ones. This compassion for the whole person of her students and friends was what made her so special to so many of us. While certainly a serious instructor, her sense of humor knew no bounds whatsoever, even to the embarrassment at times of her husband, Paul C.A., who was <laughs> on faculty at West Virginia University. I'm going to try my best to make it through the story without laughing. 
Uh, <laughs> but I'm probably going to giggle through most of it. One such time was during the first semester that I was there as her teaching assistant at West Virginia University. I was just beginning to get to know the students and the faculty, uh, many of whom became some of my best friends and lifelong friends and colleagues. Um, many of them had studied with her as undergraduates, as well as graduate students. They knew that she had a particular affinity for hosting great Halloween parties for her studio. This was news to me. I will never forget <laughs> arriving at her house with Jennifer Priester and Terry Dean, the other graduate students at the time, knocking on her door, and to my utter amazement, Virginia Thompson opens the door, clad in a rather questionable outfit. It consisted of a short black miniskirt, fishnet hose, a bustier, and the highest heels I think I've ever seen a woman wear, ever. <laughs> Behind her is her husband, Paul C.A., laughing at our reaction. I'm sure the shock on my face was pretty telling. And he was also beginning to giggle. She welcomed us in her rather unusual accent <laughs> that I knew was our first clue to her character for the evening. This was not going in the direction that I expected at all. We were all trying our best to contain our laughter and shock at the sight we saw. <laughs> Once inside, she loudly exclaimed, You have to guess what I am. My southern manners could in no way allow me to express my first thoughts. <laughs> the others weren't biting. And by this time, Jennifer Priester was laughing hysterically, as was Paul C.A. <laughs> and she loudly stated in a rather high-pitched, long line, I'm a French whore. <laughs> At this point, I knew the next two years were going to be a lot of fun. Her wit, as well, was well known amongst her students and colleagues. I remember doing a session with the graduate music student survey in which we were discussing a topic of recruiting. Uh, she famously quipped, never count them until you see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> University professors understand that statement, don't you? <laughs> Many years later, I remember chatting with her about the state of more teaching and university positions because I myself was getting ready to enter the realm of applying for college jobs. At the time, several prominent artists were taking administrative positions and often leaving studio, studio teaching behind. I said, I don't understand why so many horn players at the top of their game are becoming administrators. And without missing a beat, she said, ask me again when you've taught Kokosh for 20 years. Needless to say, it didn't take me 20 years to understand what she did. One of our alumni, Jennifer Kirby, uh, put together a slideshow of pictures shared by Virginia's many students and colleagues. And at this time, we would like to show you the slideshow, which is, set, is, which is set to a part of Virginia's recording of James Miltenberger's Horn Sonata and a voiceover that she did for The Three Fables by Gail Trifal.
by Richard Strauss, commemorating Paul Anderson's retirement. I knew of his connection, Andrew Boyson's connection, to Iowa and learned that he actually was a former student of Virginia's while they were both there. Virginia commissioned Andrew to write night songs for her, and she included it on her CD colors. As the alumni were looking for a way in which to honor Virginia, I thought it was only fitting to suggest he compose the work in the memory of Virginia. As such, several of her former students and colleagues commissioned this new work with the assistance of the consortium participants as a fitting tribute to her many years of service and prolific career. As Andrew was preparing to work on the piece, a few different things came up in discussions among the alumni. The things that seemed to resonate with Andrew were that Virginia, without fail, always told us to play pretty when we were about to perform. And we all knew of her affinity for lava lamps and pink flamingos, as a lava lamp always was present in her office. So Andrew incorporated these ideas into the work while staying true to her love of modern music. And there are a few surprises of additional instruments in the work, which we think you'll enjoy. So, without further ado, this is Virginia Songs by Andrew Poison. <laughs> 